everybody. Uh, welcome back. Um, just Kevin here of Watch This with Joe and Kevin. And the reason it's just me is I have decided on my own that I'm probably one of the few people in America left that has not ever watched The Sopranos. I've not watched a single episode of The Sopranos. Um, and Joe has seen it several times all the way through and speaks very highly of it. Obviously, he's spoken of it on the channel. And I have been very left out uh, because I've never actually watched the show. Um, I have not been living under a rock for the last couple of decades. I, I'm pretty well aware culturally of what it is. Um, I know James Gandolfini uh, plays a mob boss in this. I'm, I know Edie Falco is his wife. Um, I remember the premise of the show was that he's a mob boss who goes to therapy, and I think that the therapist he sees, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she played Karen in, um, oh my god, uh, Goodfellas. Sorry, my brain shut off there for a second. Um, I, which I've seen Goodfellas several times, and I think the the kid who played Spider, the waiter who Joe Pesci murders in, um, in Goodfellas also has a role in this. And that's the extent of my knowledge. Then the only other thing I really do know is that the, the the way the show wrapped was controversial. And I'm not really sure what it was. And the reason I never watched this was, as a much younger man, was when it was on television, I didn't have HBO. And and, and that's why there weren't, there weren't streaming options um, until, you know, in the last couple of years when I got HBO Max. So now is my chance to actually sit down and watch it. I decided to do that by myself. And I, and I thought, well, if I'm going to watch it for the first time, um, I might as well give the, the, the people on Patreon at least an opportunity to watch along with me if they're so inclined and hear my thoughts for what it's worth. Um, obviously, uh, Joe's not here. Again, he's seen it. And also, we have a limited amount of time when our schedules overlap that we can actually be in the same room together and work. And this is kind of outside of that. Um, if you don't care <laughs> about me doing this, then I, I'll just watch it on my own as we move forward. I, I, I'm totally fine with that. This is just like an optional thing right now. And if it's just a thing that nobody is into, I'll just, you know, that's totally fine. I'll just watch it. Um, I'm, I've also not decided whether or not I'll edit it and put it on YouTube either. I don't know if, if just me is enough of anything anyone's going to care about anyway. Um, but at any rate, I'm going to watch the pilot here with you guys and put it up on Patreon and see how that goes and kind of go from there. So welcome to Watch This with Joe and Kevin. Mine is Joe. Well, I've heard the theme song before. I've, I've heard this before. I don't know if this is set in New York or New Jersey. Because I thought it was New York, but this looks not New York to me. And I'm thinking maybe it's Jersey, which for television feels very mafia-y, I guess. Did David Chase have something to do with The Wire? It's a, The Wire is a show I haven't watched either, and Joe and I are going to start that soon. Mr. Okay, yeah, there she is. But yeah, she was in Goodfellas for sure. I love these like slow zooms they've been doing here in the waiting room and in the, in the doctor's room. You collapsed, possibly a panic attack. You were unable Ooh. to breathe. What line of work are you in? Waste management consultant. <laughs> it's always waste management on the on these shows. I wonder if this kind of started that trend. It's good to be in something from the ground floor. I came too late for that. But the best is over. Many Americans, I think, feel that way. This feels a lot like this. Uh, Goodfellas. A couple months before, there's these two wild ducks landed on my pool. Yeah, with those ducks. <laughs> Listen, if you don't like that ram, I'll build you another one. I... Is this going to be a big metaphor for this show, these ducks? You keep your school grades up and you keep your curfew between now and Christmas. Then you get to go. I know that. Yeah, yeah, I'll get home early from work. I'm not talking about work. What is she talking about? This is a kid who just bought himself a $60,000 Lexus. No. The patient comes to me and tells me a story where someone's going to get hurt. I'm supposed to go to the authorities. So don't tell me a crime you're going to commit. I always wonder what the line was. It's like, if you didn't commit it, if it's already it's in the past, it's okay. But if it's going to happen, that makes sense. If you borrow money from the mob, pay back the mob. It should be a priority. And right onto the sidewalk, no fear of consequences. <laughs> I mean, right in front of... Oh, I damaged the car. Right in front of the wi windows. Telephones, witnesses. 
tell people I'm nothing compared to the people that used to run. Oh. These Polacks, they'll hold paper, plastic, and the aluminum for 7000 a month, less than dick. Okay, so it's not just a front. They're, they actually do make money with the trash business. But I will say this. My uncle adds to my general stress level. <laughs> None of my business. That's a great line. We are getting a lot of names early on in this, and I'm assuming we'll get proper introductions on a lot of these characters, if they're important as, as we kind of go through the show. You know what it means for Arthur? One of these old mugs gets wet in here? Yeah, doing his business. You better sit down with your uncle. Okay, so it's all about the assassination, ha a murder happening at the restaurant. You know what I just ran into? Uncle June. Oh, that one. You think he ever comes to see his sister-in-law? When Dad died, you're going to do all kinds of things. Oh, he was a saint. Yeah, I know he was, oh. but he's gone. I wonder how long it's been since his dad died. Just worry about and you. That's don't a... start with that nursing home business again. It's yeah. not a nursing home. How many times do I got to say this? It's a retirement community. There is a difference, yeah. Sure. Run off. Man, she's a lot. The ducks. Oh, is, it, is, is this problem that they actually fly away? Mom, Daddy just fell, Mom! Yeah, Tony! I told Anthony Jr. we'd rain check his birthday. So. Yeah, okay. probably need to. Well, having that Kumad on the side helps. I told you I'm not seeing him anymore. So much for the support at the MRI. <laughs> so he's had an affair and been caught. My nephew. Christopher was handling the garbage contract problem. Garbage business is changing. You and I, the younger generation, we have issues in common. I like this. Oh. Taste the wares, email. Emil. Whoa. Is that how Tony met from to handle it? Now listen, Artie Thinner business is nice, upscale people from the suburbs. Don't ruin his life. You may run North Jersey, but you don't run your Uncle Junior. Okay, so he's a problem, yeah. <laughs> Meadow? I notice the glass rattles every time I walk to the laundry room. I take it the trip to Aspen is over. <laughs> you're not going to Aspen with Hunter yeah. Scangarello. That's where you're not going. Didn't you admit to Dr. Cusimano that you were feeling depressed? Must have been a moment of vulnerability there. Nowadays, everybody's got to go to shrinks and counselors and go on this Sally Jesse Raphael period, and talk yeah. about their problems. And then it's dysfunction this <laughs> and dysfunction that and dysfunction my fungal. This feels uncomfortable for sure. On. That is a tough throw. On. Wow, that got like two feet off the ground. He disappears. Yeah, that makes he more never sense. He comes home. They know, but they don't know. Is Christopher feeling ambitious? Grandma, this place is pretty unique. You should really think about it. You know these women in their wheelchairs uh, barely like uh, idiots. You're, you're not listening. So they, they have any place. Uh. Oh, so we had another one. She's part of that generation that grew up during the Depression. But the Depression to her was a trip to Six Flags. Quite a formidable maternal presence. She seems rough, yeah. Do you have any qualms about how you actually... Make a living. Yeah. Guys today have no room for the penal experience. So everybody <laughs> turns government witness. That's probably true. The government's probably really fine-tuned the art of getting people to turn. Here comes the Prozac. The man does not have the money. We ran the man over with the car T himself. Your uncle resents that you're the boss. Clearly, so yeah. Cruise. Oh, so so Junior has little man syndrome a little bit. Man is driven in total by his insecurities. Yep. I feel bad I was the messenger. Get him out of town for three weeks. That way the restaurant closes. The hit has to go down someplace else. That's smart, yeah. If he'll do it. He has his company start paying out phony claims to fake clinics we set up. He pays Hesh the 250 grand he owes him, which we know he cannot do. I mean, I guess that's a way around it. Every year on this date, since you were itty bitty, Mom and Meadow get all dolled up, 
I felt it was dumb since I was eight. Oh, the lashing out angry teenager. Cruz, Caribbean, SS Sagaford, 11th to the 29th. Can you take them off my hands? <laughs> Where'd they come from? Comps. I mean, that really was a smart way to get him out without having to get him out. Yeah. Come on, Arthur. Somebody donated their kneecaps for those tickets. The paperwork will look just like the real. Well, how do I not get caught? Well, it's either that or you die, man. Hey, you want to go for a walk in the rocks? The crotches, I can't. Come on, it's beautiful out there. Come on. We'll help you. Oh, they're threatening him like this is your alternative. Let's try it. There what, you go. What you were saying before, you know, the, with the MRIs. Hey, Looks like this was all shot on I location. from Triborough Towers. The Cola Brothers withdrew their bid. Tell Artie why he has to go. That's what I would do. Hey, man, something bad's going to go down if your restaurant's open. It's not me. I can't. What are you talking about? Uh, that is not his wife. <laughs> he is not done cheating. <laughs> do you know who that was? Uh, I mean, well, I mean, obviously you do. What, what, is he a patient? Mr. Borglund, they're setting up your table right now. Oh, <laughs> he got him a table. That's awesome. This is the fun side of the mob that we saw at the first half of Goodfellas before the consequences came in the second half, right? You've been in good she spirits looks the great. last couple days. <laughs> I've been seeing a therapist. <laughs> oh my god. I think that's great. Oh, okay. I thought she was upset. It's so gutsy. I, I agree. But I just think that's very, very wonderful. The wrong person finds out about this and I get a steel jacket and Anthony Preston right in the back of the head. That's probably true. He, he loses the trust of, uh, if he finds out that if, if the people he works with in four finds out he's going to his therapist and saying whatever. You told him about your father, right? Who? Your therapist. Oh, she's assuming it's a him. Yeah, and he's not going to say. <laughs> he's not going to say it's a woman. But your mother is the one. Your great grandfather and his brother Frank. They built this place. They grew up. That means something. Oh, she didn't know. Okay. They didn't design it, but they knew how to build it. Go out now. It's really cool. Two guys are gonna put decent grout on your bathtub. It is beautiful. It really is. I mean, there are guys who can still do it. Obviously, the National Cathedral is not that old, and it's beautiful. West Wing. This place about to blow up. Oh my god. They burned down Artie's shop so the murder couldn't happen there, so it'll be out of commission for a while. Prozac takes several weeks to build up effective oh. levels in the blood. I didn't know that. So what it's like a placebo it, effect? What is it about those ducks that meant so much to you? That he's just living this role here. Wild creatures come into my pool and have their little babies. Oh, it would be. We all love going to the zoo just to see the animals. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my family. I think I lost the ducks. What are you so afraid is going to happen? A number of things in his job. All of them bad. Hope comes in many forms. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll always help you. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Is Goose in trouble for opening his big mouth? It's not the first mistake that he's made. You know, a simple way to go, Chris, on the Triborough Towers contract would have been nice. That's it. I thought you said you're okay, Spider. <laughs> you're right. I have no defense. You know, my cousin Gregory's girlfriend is what they call a development girl out in Hollywood, right? What are you gonna do? Go ahead and kill on me now? Yeah. The, another Every reference to the to good fellows. Yeah. Screwing everything up. I wonder if this goes bad. If, if this is something he actually pursues in the future. I don't think anyone in one of the, in a story like this has a happy ending. These kids today. I suppose he thinks once he's got me locked in a nursing home, I'll die faster. These two really are a huge source of his problems. He's part of a whole generation. Do you remember the crazy hair? Old men with the kids these days lines. It goes back for Esper. Something may have to be done, Livia. About Tony. I don't know. 
You're using mesquite. That makes the sausage taste peculiar. Carmela, my mother's here. Everybody, let's eat! Like I just smiled through her crap. Hey, my mom's here. The usual stuff. Oh, that's a great shot. The, the, the empty pool there. Oh, that was good. All right. Um, yeah, uh, there's really a lot to love about that. You know, you have to keep in mind the, the time period, right? This was like 99 or 2000 before serialized dramas were the thing. And we, we watched the, the West Wing on the, on the channel also. And, and this and the West Wing came out pretty close to the same time, I believe. And both of them kind of created the um, the serialized drama, right? Like it's we're going to run a continuing story. You know, it's not going to be episodic where, you know, this idea of you finish an episode and you wait, uh, you know, three or four episodes later, you can jump in. And it's, it doesn't matter if you've missed anything, right? So episodes of shows used to kind of like, it had to be back where it started at the end, right? It, every episode starts at one spot and it's in the same spot so that people can watch them in any order um, whenever they feel like getting on to, to, to grab a larger audience. Um, and this show kind of kicked off the idea of we're going to tell a story here. And if you miss episodes, then you're going to be lost. Um, so you really, you really need to make the commitment. Um, I think this was like the beginning of Sunday night programming on hbo um i could be wrong about that i know oz was around in here somewhere too oz is also a show i've never watched and i've been told it's a it's a pretty tough hang um so i may never actually get into watching oz um but yeah man, I, I remember what a phenomenon uh this was when it came on and it, you know it, the mobster story isn't new like this wasn't very far after goodfellas goodfellas was in the early 90s i believe and so this is obviously late '90s, early 2000s. So there's 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 definitely a, a gap in time. And, and you know the mob movie's been around since movies have been around, right? Going all the way back, like James Cagney and stuff like that. But um, this is a, probably you know again, it's only one episode, but this is really humanizing. Um, Tarantino gets a lot of credit, right, for for humanizing some of his some of his rougher characters. You know, having like normal conversations. And and Goodfellas was was Henry Hill's story. Um, I've not read the book. I've just seen the movie several times. And, you know, you kind of get the perspective of, I wanted to be a gangster, and isn't this cool? And it all got screwed up, and now I'm living like a schmuck. But there's never real vulnerability uh, in Goodfellas, and I feel like that's here in this, at least so far for Tony. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get it from some of the other characters moving forward, right? Um, Christopher obviously has big ambitions, um, and, and Tony kind of hugged it and laughed it out with him in the end about the Hollywood screenplay thing. But that could be an issue moving forward, right? Tony's infidelity and the fact that his wife is uh, Camilla is kind of on board with you know with, with his therapy, but I you know you get the sense that if she knew everything Tony was doing, you know I was honest with you, she's like oh please that that she wouldn't be, and that may be an issue moving forward. Tony's raising two kids who don't really seem to appreciate too much of what he is, at least at this stage. I don't know if they know what he is. I mean, they may think that, like, I their dad is just a really rich and successful owner of a garbage business, right, waste management business. They may not know that, uh, that, that he's largely responsible for a lot of illegal activity. Bookkeeping and, and obviously, you know, assassinations are happening. Um, that, that that sort of thing. There was definitely big threats made. Um, so they may not know. Um, I'm really confident that his wife knows that's not the kind of thing you're probably going to successfully keep from her for all of the years they've been together. Um, and, the, you know, it seems like it's kind of common knowledge, right? His therapist knew what his, act, you know, what his real job was beyond waste management when they sat down to talk. Her husband or boyfriend, whatever the guy was at the restaurant, he knew who Tony Soprano was and what that meant. So, Maybe the kids are just kind of intentionally left in the dark. Um, maybe they don't know. Maybe they do. It wouldn't surprise me either way. Um, so I'm really curious to see how that unfolds moving forward. I think it's kind of like we're watching the Americans right now on the channel, right? It may be a situation where the kids don't know right now, but that may be an issue looming in the future that that, that um, it becomes more and more clear uh, what, what the reality is to them. You, know, you, know, you can lie to kids for a while because they're kids, but... You know, they're going to be adults someday, and they're going to look back and be like, oh, yeah, that's what Dad was doing. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited to to jump into this series. Like I said, I'll do it uh, either way. 
if nobody on Patreon or YouTube cares about uh, this, that is totally okay. I don't blame you. Usually I'm, I'm, I'm here with Joe, and I probably would still be if, if this wasn't one of Joe's favorite shows that he's seen many times and has been telling me many times that I need to sit and watch it. And uh, so uh, I hope you like this. I, I hope you would like me to keep going with this. Um, it would make watching it a lot more interesting for me if you were here with me. Um, I, I'm a person who has always believed since I was a little kid that that sharing the experience uh, of watching something uh, for the first time is is, is always uh, more fun than just kind of taking it in yourself. Um, I know I've always been a person who, if I watch a movie or a TV show, I want to share that with other people. So I'll sit down with them who haven't seen, like, oh my god, you know, you've never you've never seen The Godfather. Come over and watch it, and then, you know, get to sit with them and experience that with them. So that's that's a lot of fun. For me, um, I've loved watching everything we watch on the channel because we get to share that with other people who are passionate about the things that we're watching, and it makes it a much more enriching experience uh, for us watching stuff. And I would love to have that with The Sopranos here um, all the way through the series. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, we shall do that. Uh, hopefully, I will catch you on the next one, guys. Thanks for, for being here with me.